Hello game makers, this is Game Maker Rob and in today's episode we are going to turn our 2D map into an isometric one and also introduce you into lists and how we are going to make heights and everything else going forward. Let's get started. Okay, so last week we ended with a basic 2D editor, nothing that you couldn't really have done inside a normal room editor itself. Uh, but now we're actually going to uh, convert that 2D editor into an isometric one and then we're going to introduce heights into the editor as well uh, and that will make it worth the time we invested so far. So the first thing I'll do is take you through the sprites that we have. Um, if you remember we had uh, a 2D sprite uh, for we had a blank grass, snow and water image in it. And we have an isometric sprite, which has the same images, but obviously in isometric, we have a blank image first, then grass then snow and water. Uh, the sprite origin for these is 2820. Um, I'm gonna upload these sprites into the description box. So if you don't have your own, you can use these ones. Uh, I also have uh, SPR, ISO decoration, this is a new one. Uh, we don't have a 2D version of this. Um, it's mainly just, it's just walls for now. Uh, it's just anything you want to place on top of a floor. Um, it's called decoration. That's how we're gonna do it in this tutorial. Uh, centered on 3050. And we have a mouse cursor. This was the 2D mouse cursor. This is the isometric one. Uh, same origin point as the floor. Okay, so let's get on with the code now. Inside OBJ editor in the create event, uh, we're gonna have two new variables, ISO width and ISO height, and it's simply gonna get the width and height of uh, this sprite here. Uh, I don't think I've gone through this uh, right now. Basically, this sprite, is going to tell us uh, how wide each isometric cell is and how high it is. If you notice, it's just basically the diamond part that I've copied. That's This is the only part we need. If we got the width and height of this sprite, then it's going to give us all this extra height here that we don't need, and it's going to mess up our calculations. So. If you have your own isometric tiles, it's just the diamond shape at the top that we need for the width and height, this bit. Okay, so that's gonna give us our width and height of our diamond shape. And then in the step event, um, the only thing I've changed right now is uh, determining grid X and grid Y. So this was the 2D, grid x grid y this is going to be the isometric grid x grid y uh, these calculations might be confusing to you at first um, you don't have to understand it to, to copy it i didn't at first um, when we actually draw the isometric grid it's going to be easy to understand because you'll have a visual aid to go by so make sure you've got this down for the grid x and grid y and then in the draw event, let's minimize these ones. So in the draw cell region, we have commented out the 2D draw X draw Y, and this is the isometric draw X draw Y. That's gonna give us the proper coordinates to draw the cells. And then we also commented out this uh, line to change SBR floor to SBR ISO floor. And then in testing, just so we can still see the numbers, um, I've changed the H align and V align to center and middle. And then I've just changed the 2D cursor to the isometric cursor in this region as well. So uh, one more thing, I think, draw GUI. Uh, no, actually we can just uh, run the game and we should have uh, an isometric grid. 
uh, but it's going to be drawn partially off the screen because we haven't uh, changed the camera yet. So you should, should have something like this where you can only like see half the grid. Uh, if you press left or right, you can still change um, the image. And if you left click, you can paint the isometric shape like that. So this is where you should be right now. Okay, so now we are going to add a camera to it. It's just something very simple. In the create events of OBJ editor, uh, we're gonna add these two variables. We're gonna have CX, which is gonna be the camera X position. Uh, CY is gonna be the camera Y position. Uh, the, the view or the camera is being drawn from the top left. So we're gonna position it so we kind of have the map centered, which is what these two lines are going to do. And then this function actually sets the camera to the camera X and camera Y coordinate that we just set here. And then uh, to actually move the camera around, we're gonna add a new region in the step event. So we're just checking for W, S, A, and D, um, adding or subtracting to C, Y, or CX as and when needed. Um, and if we press any of these keys, then we also want to run the function to set the camera position as well, based on the new coordinates. So if we now run the game, we should be able to see the whole thing. There we go. So uh, the map's pretty much centered as best as I can do it for now anyway. So if we play around with the editor, like I said, we can edit the whole map. Uh, as before, but this time it's in isometric. Uh, we can have like a hole in in the middle as well. Like this. So uh, as long as you have that on your project, then you are in the same place as I am. Okay, so I'm gonna use one of my amazing diagrams to explain uh, just how we are going to store more than one piece of information per cell in the grid because at the moment uh, we've got a grid uh, it doesn't matter whether we draw it in 2d or iso it's the same grid uh, storing the same data uh, this particular example i have here uh, is mostly grass so all these green cells are going to be holding the value of one because one is the image index for grass in the sprites that we're using to draw and we have some water tiles over here and they're all going to hold the value of three because three is the image index for water in our sprite. So uh, we want to be able to store the height, uh, decoration index, uh, as well as the floor index and uh, plenty more variables um, later on. Um, we can't do that easily and, and simply with just the grid. So, uh, like I've put here, lists are a perfect answer. If you're not sure what a list is, um, if you know what, what a 1D array is, it's kind of similar um, in, in that it's one dimensional. Um, main differences are that a list is a lot more dynamic. So you can add and remo remove entries and the size of it changes. Um, Game Maker also comes with a lot of useful functions for lists like uh, shuffling or uh, or writing, saving the list data to a file, or sorry, saving it into a string. Um, so it makes, uh, it makes managing, saving and loading data a lot easier as well. So this is why I'm going to go for a list uh, rather than a 1D array. Um, when Game Maker creates a list or, or when we create a list in Game Maker, or, or any data structure for that for that matter, uh, Game Maker is gonna assign it a number. So the very first data structure gets assigned number zero, and then the second data structure gets assigned one, and then two, and then three, and four. And these are what what's known as pointers. Um, so each of these cells, rather than storing one, zero, one, two, or three. As before it's going to store the index of the 
list that it contains. So for example, the first list we create is a number two, then this will be number two. And then the next list that's going to be created is a number three. And then the next list created is going to be number four and so on up until probably what 103 thereabouts 101 2 I don't quite know but that's going to be every cell is going to hold the number of the list that contains the data we want and each list is going to hold this information it's going to hold the floor image index so 0 1 2 or 3 uh, decoration image index uh, probably 0 to 20 and height uh, we're going to have a maximum height of 12 tiles so height is going to be 0 to 11 and we're going to store three bits of information inside each cell by using a list so that's what we're going to do now okay so now we are going to implement in code everything that i've just been talking about with the diagram we've got a new region in the create event called setup tile enumerator we're going to have three pieces of information in each list so you're going to store the floor index decoration index and height um, in our setup grid region we have modified uh, the inside of the double for loop previously we just had this line which sets every cell to a value of one um, but instead now we are going to create a list for every cell we're going to save that uh, list number inside the cell and then for each list we're going to set a value for every piece of data so uh, there's going to be three pieces of data if uh, the first if we get to the entry which is grass which is the floor sorry which we start at then we're going to set it to one otherwise we're going to set every entry to zero so basically every list this is going to be equal to one that's going to equal zero and that's going to equal zero two and also we're just going to have like a little readout so you can see the numbers for each list going to minimize this now okay so uh, we're going to go into the draw event now okay so in the draw event uh, inside draw cell we have a few changes originally we were having uh, index equals ds train data x x y y um, we need to know we need to find a list for each cell so this first line is going to tell us what list is stored inside xxyy of ds train data so for example if we're at uh, xx1 and yy0 then the list id is going to be three so now we know that then we can check this list and find out what data is stored under floor index and it's uh, we're going to save that information in floor ind um, i've changed index to floor ind uh, just to make it more readable so we don't confuse uh, decoration and floors that kind of thing and then I've uh, replaced index with floor in here and then uh, testing show the numbers um, we've added these two lines so we've, we're grabbing the list again from the S train data and we're just drawing uh, whatever the index of the list is I think that is it for the draw event. Yeah, okay, so let's run the game again. We should now see in our output, if we maximize it, you'll see all these numbers. Each one of these numbers is a list, basically. It's a pointer to a list. There's a hundred of them. And in our game, you can see it's numbered from 0 to 99 because the grid is saving the pointer to each list it's not saving uh, 
uh, any of the data itself. It's just saving the pointer to the list, and the list is saving the information. Uh, that's how we're still able to draw all these tiles. Okay, so uh, we're going to call it a day in a minute. There's one last thing that I want to show you. I'm trying to keep these episodes fairly short just to kind of make it bite size. Um, we're not really going to need grid size anymore. So that's why we have this yellow mark. So we can just delete it if we want to. Uh, so the last thing we're going to do is uh, update our paint the map region. So we can still make changes to the uh, terrain as before. Uh, previously, we just had this line. We just changed uh, grid X, grid Y inside terrain data to whatever new index was. Um, this time we need to grab the list as before. So list is going to be uh, like three, four, five, six, seven, whatever it is from inside uh, terrain data. And then we're just going to change uh, floor index inside the list to new index and that's all we need to do. So if we run the game now I'm going to change it to snow and paint over here and I have some water over here and then maybe a chasm in the middle as usual and, and that's it. Uh, next episode, we are going to get on with the heights, uh, saving the maps, loading them, uh, all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, next episode should be pretty fun. Uh, thank you for watching. I will catch you next time. Bye for now.